Are you ready to help the parents of this child in their duty as Christian parents? Glenn Anthony, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy. In its name, I claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of his cross. I now trace the cross on your forehead and invite your parents, godparents, and Christian witness to do the same. Almighty and ever-living God, you sent your only Son into the world to cast out the power of Satan's spirit of evil, to rescue man from the kingdom of darkness, and to bring him into the splendor of the kingdom of light. We pray for this child, set him free from original sin, make him a temple of your glory, and send your Holy Spirit to dwell with him. We ask this in Christ our Lord. We anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior, that he strengthen you with his power, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters, we use the sacrament of water to give his divine life to those who believe in him. <coughs> Let us turn to him and ask him to pour his gift of life from this font on this child he has chosen. Father, you give us the grace through sacramental signs which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you have given us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your child breathed on the water, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood, you made a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people, set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples, go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church, and unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Spirit, give to the water of this font the grace of your Son. You created man in your own likeness, cleanse him from sin, and a new birth to, an, to innocence by the water and the Spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son to send the Holy Spirit upon the water of this font. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with him to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Parents and godparents, you have come here to present this child for baptism by water and the Holy Spirit. He is to receive the gift of new life from God through his love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring him up in the practice of the faith. See that the divine life which God gives him is kept safe from the poison of sin to grow always stronger in his life. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, renew now the vows of your own baptism, reject sin, Profess your faith in Christ Jesus. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which this child is about to be baptized. And as we make these renewal of promises, I invite all who have been baptized, either in the Roman Catholic Church or another Christian tradition, to possibly, if they can, is to answer these. Do you reject Satan? I do. I do. And all his works? I do. I do. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? 
I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it. Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And this is addressed to the parents and godparents. Is it your will that twin Anthony should be baptized in the faith of the church, which we have all professed with you? Yes. Now, if you will hold him his head down a little more. Here comes the Holy and hold him, make connection with him, hold him somewhere. Reach in. He's got his hand. He's got his hand, okay. Because everybody's connected with this. There's no bystanders here. He's watching my hand. Does my hand leave my arm, okay? When Anthony, I baptize you in the name of the Father. <laughs> and of the Son, <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. There's the towel. Oh, it's okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> it might be Oh, he will. Especially after we tell him. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry, sweet. No, I'm the one that gave you, so don't get it. Twin Anthony, you have become a new creation and clothed yourself in Christ. See in this white garment the outward sign of your Christian dignity with your family and friends to help you by word and example bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Amen. symbol I forgot to tell you about was was that Easter Vigil, a new Easter candle is lit. Uh, It's blessed. There's a fire that is blessed, considered the new fire. It is blessed. Paschal candle is lit (coughs) on that fire. And in the beginning of the Easter season, it is kept up at the ambo or the pulpit. And then after the Easter season, it is put down by the baptismal font. Every baptismal candle is lit off of that during the year to symbolize our connection with the risen Lord. Uh, And what we urge sometimes parents to do is to bring this out as the child gets a little bit older and show the child pictures of their baptism to remind them of what they went to and explain the ceremonies. Usually most of the time you light a candle, they think it's a birthday party. And this is, this is their birthday in the church. 
receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning bright. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. He is to walk always as a light of a, a child of the light. May he keep the flame of faith alive in his heart. When the Lord comes, may he go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. The Lord may the deaf hear and the dumb speak. May he soon touch your ears to receive his word. <laughs> and your mouth to proclaim his faith. To the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. And again, that prayer was, was that may the Lord open his ears, again, as it says, to hear his word and open his mouth to proclaim that word that he hears. At the ordination of a deacon, since we are ordained to proclaim the gospel of Christ, we are given a book of the gospels, and we are told to read the gospels, read scripture, and then proclaim what we read, and practice what we proclaim. And it's the same thing with our baptism. So, see how all these things are connected with our life? What well, wouldn't it be a truly blessed world if we all lived out our baptismal promises? So we have to use the graces that are given us. Our next step is that we are going to proceed up to the altar. <laughs>